The Democracy for the People Act has been passed in the Minnesota House. The bill centers around making elections more secure and expanding access to voting in the state. ABC6 News reporter Alex Cotter spoke with the local lawmaker today about the bill. He joins us live from our newsroom with the very latest. Alex. Yeah, James and Laura, this bill, like many this session, was passed along party lines. Democrats pushed it through and Republicans voted no. Those who are for this bill say it's a big win for Minnesota voters, but opponents say they have some concerns about what might actually happen. You know, and this bill has good portions and bad portions in my mind. Minnesota had one of the best overall voter turnouts in the country last election, but struggled among 18 to 24 year olds. The Democracy for the People Act, if passed, would allow 16 to 17 year olds to pre-register to vote. People could also be automatically registered to vote based on data from things like driver's licenses and MNSURE enrollment. Those who voted in favor of the bill, like DFL Representative Andy Smith, say this bill should help young voter turnout. And so they want to make it as easy as possible for those people to uh, know that they can vote, to have the necessary information of where and when and how to vote. Um, and for that to just be something that's accepted as part of being a citizen of the United States is that you vote. Republican Representative Peggy Bennett says it's important that people who want to vote have the ability to do so, but she has raised concerns about privacy. That's public information now. So their name, address, phone number, whatever they give, that is not public information. So these young people, when they become 18, suddenly all their information is online for everybody to know. I think that's a concern. Michelle Witte with the League of Women's Voters says this should streamline the voting process. This moves it to an opt out. It just makes it easier. It's also easier on election officials and public officials just automatically make you registered to vote. Doesn't mean you're voting. You still get to decide. Um, but that's really, again, the best way to do it. It's Another key part of the bill is it addresses misinformation spread about elections. Both representatives Smith and Bennett agree that it's been an issue. But um, I think having things be transparent on who's funding uh, particular election material or um, if, if we have companies with foreign influence or that kind of thing, I, I think we can all agree we don't want that kind of thing and that we want that transparency and so on. Um, that is now considered um, potentially criminal um, and at the very least people can be sued for that. And so uh, this creates some really good guardrails for those particular conversations. The bill was passed along party lines without a single Republican vote, but Witte thinks there is more common ground on these issues than it might seem. This is really, again, about everyone being able to have easier access while also making sure the system is um, has good safeguards. Other pieces of the bill include permanent mail-in voting for those who request it, ballots in languages other than English, and closing loopholes with foreign entities influencing elections like funding campaign ads. This bill is still in committee in the Senate. James yeah. Alex, you mentioned that no Republicans voted for this bill. What were some of the things that they wanted to see in this bill that weren't included? Yeah, well, I talked with uh, Representative Peggy Bennett, and she told me that they tried uh, not just closing loopholes for the foreign for-profits, but from nonprofits as well, but that was shot down by the Democratic majority.